A, let's talk about divergent boundaries and what their characteristics are. So first of all, let's see where they exist. So divergent boundaries are mostly along mid-ocean ridges, like you have here. And what's happening along those mid-ocean ridges, as we learned earlier, is that the two sides are pulling apart. They're moving in opposite directions away from the ridge, and new seafloor is forming at the ridge. So one of the features that we see at the divergent boundaries usually is some kind of mid-ocean ridge. So let's look at Google Earth Pro here, and we'll zoom in on one of these ridges, which is right over here. And I'm going to start this up, show the elevation profile across there. So this is what an uh, elevation profile looks like across a mid-ocean ridge. You can see it's very high in the center and then descends on either side until it reaches the abyssal plain, the deep ocean floor here. So the landform along the divergent boundaries is usually a mid-ocean ridge. So that's one feature that they have. Uh, another feature is volcanism. So all along the mid-ocean ridge system here, you're going to have volcanism that's going to occur. But usually that's at the bottom of the ocean, so it's really hard to see. But one place where we can see it really well is here in Iceland. So Iceland is an island that sits right on the mid-Atlantic ridge, and it is cut through by this rift valley running right through here. And you can see these are all the different volcanoes that are present along that mid-ocean ridge system. And some of these have been quite active, uh, including uh, Vestmanair and Ayafialayokul and a few other ones. Uh, Laki is another famous one. So there are a number of volcanoes up and down uh, the middle of Iceland that have been very active. And these are typically the types of volcanoes that are going to be putting out basaltic lava, usually not the most dangerous, although sometimes they can make a big deal. So those are some of the landforms, and those are also the volcanoes that we have there. If we zoom out a little bit here, we can turn on the seafloor ages, and we can see that in terms of seafloor ages, they are young at the ridge, and they get older and older as you go away from the ridge. So that's another characteristic of, uh, of these types of boundaries. Turn that off. And what about the earthquakes? Let's look at the earthquakes, and we're going to select the new region on our earthquake browser here. And I guess we'll select the same area. zoom to that region. And what you'll notice right away is that this is a lot of earthquakes. They are right on the boundary and for the most part shallow. Very few intermediate to deep earthquakes along there. So shallow earthquakes right along the boundary and they tend not to be the biggest earthquakes either. If we look at the other formats here we can see that the biggest ones are going to be a magnitude 7 or so earthquake. So not huge earthquakes that are along those boundaries. And mid-ocean ridges, these are one of the places where we have divergent boundaries. This is most of the places where we have divergent boundaries. Uh, but there are a few others. And one of the most interesting places is here in East Africa where we have the East African Rift Zone. And if we look at that area, we can see a very typical situation when a new divergent boundary forms. And what that is, is three arms to the rift. So Africa started to break apart, and it usually forms three directions of rifting. In this case, you have the Red Sea, you have the Gulf of Aden, and then you have the East African Rift Zone, it runs right down here through East Africa. And usually what will happen is two of these directions will take over and the third will be abandoned. So it looks like you have the Red Sea, which is uh, progressing very nicely, the Gulf of Aden, which has opened up even farther, but the East African Rift Zone doesn't seem to be making a lot of progress. So this seems to show what happens in the early stages of rifting, which is 
that it's on land. You're going to have a lot of earthquakes. There are volcanoes that are uh, related to this uh, type of boundary. So let's look back at the Google Earth and we'll go over here. Here's the same area. And you can see a whole line of volcanoes going down through East Africa and in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden also have volcanoes, but you can see them better on land. So that's why you see them all here. And so you're going to have a lot of volcanoes. You're going to have a big valley that forms and gradually drops down lower. And when we look into that valley, what you see is that there are some big lakes along that. So some of these famous lakes are there. There's Lake Victoria, but there's Lake Albert. There's Lake Tanganyika here. Uh, there's Lake Malawi right down here. So that seems to be an early feature of these types of boundaries is... Uh, forming deep lakes, a rift valley, and lots of earthquakes, and lots of volcanoes. But eventually this is probably going to get abandoned as these two sides take over and eventually open up into a wide ocean basin. Now another place where this has actually happened is in Minnesota. So if we head over here to Minnesota, we see that it, right now it's in the middle of a continent. There are no big volcanoes, there's few earthquakes, but if you go back far enough, to about 1.1 or so billion years ago, North America started to break open along this uh, area. And we can map that by using gravity. These are dense rocks that have a larger gravitational pull, uh, part of the mid-continent rift system. And you can see it goes as far south here as Oklahoma, uh, this is Kansas, Nebraska, up through Iowa and through Minnesota and up along the North Shore, which is where we can see a lot of these volcanic rocks that erupted into that rift, and then down through here, through Michigan, and into this part of North America over here. So you had sort of two arms of the rift there. There was probably a third arm that went up here, and that just never really got going. It The whole thing stopped at a certain point and just never ended up completing the rifting process. And nobody quite knows why that is, but um, it's too bad that it didn't. Otherwise, we could have been on the coastline, we could have rifted off Wisconsin and maybe Iowa as well, and we would have had beaches and really nice weather here. But instead, we're in the middle of a continent. So anyway, those are some facts and information about uh, divergent boundaries.